Could, could you take a deep breath and calm down, please? But I do have a heart-shaped mole on my thigh. I'm not disputing the existence of a mole on your thigh. I'm just saying it's a mole that I've never seen. You mean you didn't base the character of Beth Lambeth on me? Since I've never even met you, it's safe to say I didn't base any character on you. I was sure she was me. I used to volunteer at General Hospital. Well, I know it can be disappointing to learn that you weren't the inspiration for any character in my book, but take heart in the knowledge that you're safe from the General Homicide Killer. Dr. Collins will be taking more calls when we return from station identification. Clear. I'll be right there. WL23, Fort Charles. Well, we have people calling in. Unfortunately, they all have a complaint or a fantasy about my book. Why do you think our guy's holding back tonight? I don't know. It could be he's just not free to make the call. Maybe he left his voice activator in his other coat. <laughs> I think he's enjoying the game. He knows we want him to call, but he likes watching us wait with bated breath. He's getting off on the power. I can't wait to nail this loser's carcass to a wall. Yeah, you and me both. Well, we have plenty of calls. Let's hope one of them is the one we want. In five. I'm on. Four, three, two. This is Kevin Collins, author of General Homicide, taking your calls. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? <laughs> Who is this? You said you hadn't forgotten me. Don't you recognize my voice? I haven't forgotten you. I warned you that someone else would die. And I'm not even close to being finished. <laughs> what do you mean you warned us that people would die? No one's died since your last call. Someone almost died. Who almost died? Dr. Matt Harmon. That wasn't in the papers. I wasn't aware anyone tried to murder Dr. Harmon. You think that electric shock he got was an accident? Think again. You caused Dr. Harmon's accident? Yes. That's the animal who ripped your apartment. How did you do that? It was easy. It may have been easy for you, but not everyone could do something like that. Oh, it worked perfectly. I took the light fixture off and split the wire, running half of it down the chain that turns on the light. Fascinating. But how could you be sure that Dr. Harmon would use that light? I made sure the overhead light was out, so he would have to turn on the booby trap light. When he pulled that chain, he got the jolt of his life. Oh, my God. <laughs> this guy's a sicko. Listen, if we can find Frank or Chris while Kevin still has this fruit loop on the line, then we can be sure that neither of them did this to me. Are you going to be all right here? There's a cop at the door, yeah. I'll be all right. Fine. Mm -hmm. I got it. All right, listen, you take it. Frank and I'll go and look for Chris. All right, okay. Listen, just locate them. Don't get in their faces. But hurry up while Kevin still has a guy in the front. All right. Yeah. What about the attempt on Dr. Harmon? Did that have something to do with what you said the last time you called? That you felt neglected? What does it matter why I do what I do? Oh, I see. What? That it's very lonely where you are. Here you are committing all these spectacular crimes, mm -hmm. eluding the entire police department, and there isn't a single soul that you can share your accomplishments with. No wonder you feel forgotten. You must have an incredible urge to take credit for your work. I'm not stupid. I realize that's not possible. Then why feel forgotten? When I was a child, I felt overlooked by my mother. I hated it. Did you ever experience something like that? That's you, doctor, not me. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. After all, you and I share quite a connection. I wrote my book as a way to pass the time, but eventually I realized that I was exercising demons from my past. That's what you're doing, isn't it? 
I vented my anger vicariously through my book. But what I did in art, you're doing in life. Oh, so what are you saying? That I'm your evil twin? Oh, that's right. You already have an evil twin. Except you murdered him. And that was for real. My brother died in an explosion, but not one of my making. Yeah, but you were glad about it, weren't you? You wanted him to die. Well, what about you? Do your victims have to die for a particular reason? Is there something that happened to you that they have to pay for? Well, I think there is. Often for us to create a new life for ourselves, we have to destroy the old one. And that's what you're doing, isn't it? You seem to know a lot about my family and my past. Do these murders have something to do with yours? Nice try, Doctor. But if you think you're going to get me to tell you about my mommy cheerist, think again. So this is about your mother. Oh, how Freudian. Don't be so literal, doctor. No wonder you can't figure me out. Payphone, fourth and maple. Keep them on the line until we pick them up. You're right. I can't figure you out. But you want me to, don't you? You want to be understood. That's why you keep calling me. But you have to help me. The more you can tell me, the more I can understand. How do you choose your next victim? I didn't choose them. You did. Yes, you continue to murder people who appeared as characters in my book. But you're doing away with them in your own sequence, not according to the plot of General Homicide. How do you decide who to murder next? That would be giving you too big a hint. You're not worried you'll lose the element of surprise, are you? You're obviously very intelligent. Don't you want your victims to have a chance? Wouldn't that be more of a challenge? Hey. Hey. Did you find Frank? Uh, he's, uh, he's out on an ambulance call, but I, I left the page and left your room number. Well, no one called. And Kevin's still on the phone with the guy. Yeah, I heard. All the radios in the place are tuned into that show. I tried the nurse's station, the on-call room, and I walked the sixth floor. No sign of Chris. I paged him, but he hasn't returned the page. So both Chris and Frank are unaccounted for. But it still doesn't mean that either one of them is the creep on the phone with Kevin. But they both could be. Why did you pick my book to copycat your crimes? I'm not copying you or anyone else. No. no, of course you're not. Actually, your crimes are way too creative to ever be called copies. And by rearranging the victims in the order that you attack them, you're actually rewriting my novel. That's something else we have in common. You have a bit of the author in you. There's another way we're alike. What's that? You've had your dark days, haven't you, doctor? Would you like that to be true? If it were true, then you'd really be able to understand someone like me. Wouldn't you? I want to be able to understand you, but you have to help me. Let's start with your victims. Why kill Bennett Devlin? Because he deserved to die! They all deserved it! You've said that before. But why him? What was his crime? Too many to list. Then tell me his worst. If you're as much like me as you claim to be, you'd understand the method to my madness. I can't yet. 
But I could if you tell me why you did what you did. Are you just lying about wanting to understand? Why would I do that? What would I have to gain? Hello? Hello? What's that you say at the end of a session, Doctor? Oh, I think our time is up. No, no, wait. Damn, call in the area. This is Garcia. Get a fingerprint technician aboard the Maple. Detective Garcia, look who I found down the street. I'd like to speak to my son. Do you mind? Thank God you're here. This is a ridiculous mistake. I know, I know, and I'll get you out of here as soon as I can. But first, tell me what happened. Victor, the last time I saw you was at home connected to all your phone equipment. After I made the trace of the, of the murderer's telephone call, and that equipment is excellent, by the way, especially considering its rock-bottom price. Well, I was so excited that my plan had actually worked that I just had to go to the payphone to see who it was for myself. Garcia, this is a mistake. He was only trying to help. We found Victor in the vicinity of the phone used by the self-professed killer. He goes nowhere for now. But he's not your man. And I think I can prove it. I'm listening. I want to go back on the radio while you have Victor in custody. If I can bait the killer to call me while I'm on the air, then we have the proof that Victor's innocent. I saw on television that Victor was here. Actually, killer's still out there, but Victor's under arrest as the prime suspect. Excuse us. It was so sweet of you to come. I'm so glad you're here. I wish, I wish Kevin felt the same way. But you are the man I, I came to see. Okay, explain what happened to me. How could the police find you at, at the court? phone call place. I mean, why were you there where they traced it to? Explain. Well, they're, they're police ineptitude. That's all it is. I, I traced the phone call faster than they did. I even got to the payphone ahead of them. If they, if they weren't totally incompetent, they should have been there early enough to arrest the, the, the culprit, and uh, that way we wouldn't go through this whole fiasco. Right, so we just have to convince the police that they've got the wrong man. Oh, I was there, and that's all they want to hear about, apparently. Also, because the, the, the killer's voice was distorted over the telephone, they think it could just as easily have been mine. It, it, it just gets more and more absurd. <sighs> Brother, okay, is, is there something I can do anything? Oh, no, thank you for asking. Monk is doing everything he can to get me out of here. I, I think I'm in good hands. You're in best, best hands ever. I, I just feel like I need to do something. Oh, Lucy, if you and he could work together, who knows what might come of that? Yeah, well, that would be a little difficult. Seeing how he's not really speaking to me at the moment doesn't look too promising. Hey, never give up. I know my son. He may be as stubborn as a stone, but I promise you I am not the only person who misses your ta around the lighthouse. Thank you. I don't want to sound selfish, but I can't think of a better way for you to reconcile than by joining forces to save me from an unjust imprisonment. How's that for a fairy tale ending? I love it. I just happening though you know because a few days ago I was going to be married to that man over there and now it doesn't have anything to do with me that won't do it just won't do so I'm gonna win him back that's all 